Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this pre-match press conference with um, Dean Alga. Um, just a reminder to everyone to please ensure that you mute yourself or you remain muted when you're not asking a question. And to keep it one question at a time and um, to put your request to ask a question on the chat panel, we'll start with Telford. Sorry. I, unmute. I forgot to unmute eventually. Uh, <laughs> it's I mean, a good question to ask, I suppose, of a, of a team that's just won by 220 runs, but are you, are you contemplating changes? Um, not really. Um, I think um, if you want to have a bit of consistency and if you want to have a bit of success in the test arena or international cricket, that is, you've got to, you've got to keep some sort of consistency going. I think uh, again, playing in PE, the conditions are, are pretty much uh, what we expect, uh, what we had in in Durban, um, and then obviously viewing the wicket that that they've prepared does almost say that we might go in with the same kind of uh, structure going forward. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, we still have a few hours to decide what we're going to go with. But currently, as I as I said, now I don't think uh, there will be too many changes. Would anyone like to go after Telford? Sorry, not Dean. Thanks for those. Uh, hi, Dean. Dean, considering what you've just said, if you are looking to keep a similar kind of 11, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your use of Vian Milder as a bowler and kind of how do you see him fitting in Willy Bowler, but more when can you use him? And, and also, have you spoken to him about his batting? Look, I think um, ad ad adaptability is something that I, I like to say is part of my um, leadership going forward. Um, <clears throat> I would love to use Vian a lot more with regards to the ball in hand. Um, I would have liked to have used him a lot more in Durban, but uh, we saw what the conditions were like. And I thought if we keep the pressure on, on the Bangladeshi batting attack with our spinners that we have, who are world class, um, it's, it's best to maybe utilize them a little bit more than a guy like Fessy. Uh, but in saying that, conditions might be different. So, uh, yeah, um, they might be a little bit more on offer with uh, all depending on what kind of wind is blowing. Um, the ball might swing a little bit more and um, I'll be forced to obviously to use Vessi um, in a lot uh, greater capacity. I obviously want to give him a lot more responsibility and opportunity to obviously showcase his skill and um, obviously try and give us um, a lot more options going forward. But yeah, I'd like to, um, I'd like to think that um, I'll be using Vessi in a little bit of a, of a different capacity, especially if the ball is swinging. Heinz, Ken and then Tafford. Hi, Dean. Hope you're well. Um, almost appropriate that you mentioned the win a bit because I just wanted to ask you about it. Um, Alan Donald mentioned, you know, that particularly the afternoon wind might become a bit disconcerting at times for bowlers and fielders alike. Um, you've played there a couple of times now. In P is it is it is it that big a factor? Do you really need to take it into account, especially as a field and stuff, or do you just go with the flow and just ensure your skills are okay? Um, the wind plays a massive factor. Um, yeah, it's St. George's. Um, since we've got here, the wind hasn't stopped blowing. So we kind of know what we might be experiencing for the next five days. Uh, but yeah, the wind plays a huge part. If, obviously, if the wind's coming over the scoreboard, they call it the swing wind. Yeah, it's in George's, and that might assist the bowlers. But in saying that, they're on the other side of the field next to the change room and the president's suite, um, if the wind comes through that little gap there, uh, it does tend to cause a lot of swirling wind within the stadium. Um, we experienced a lot of wind uh, today in our training session, and we had a great reference with regards to how um, the wind can play a massive part, with, especially with the ball that goes up in the air and catching. Catching's uh, already pretty tough um, at St. George's Park, but, um, but yeah, and then, and then you got the wind to, to add a little bit of a different dynamic uh, as well. Uh, the wind plays a massive part for bowlers, um, especially in their run-ups, all depending on which direction the wind's blowing from. And it also plays a, a factor with a batsman. Sometimes the wind tends to blow you a little bit over your front foot and does maybe get you um, going across the ball a little bit. Um, so, yeah, the wind is is pretty much uh, a big uh, a big playing, playing factor that, that we've got to take into account playing here. Okay. Thanks, Abtai Dean. Um, 
you you did only play two um two seamers uh in king's Mead. uh they didn't have a huge amount of work to do but but how happy were you with their um actual performance uh, and i'm thinking especially of the second new ball um in the bangladesh first innings uh, obviously yeah look it's a tough one on the seamers because of the nature of the of the conditions and the kind of style of cricket that <laughs> we were almost forced to to implement uh, at kingsmead i thought a guy like lizzie williams on his debut uh, was brilliant um he, he executed his game plan to a t and uh, that's what i kind of needed from him uh, a guy like Duzel maybe uh, didn't get a lot of opportunity but i thought he brought a lot of intensity and it seemed like his paces were up uh, I think when a bowler knows that he's only going to bowl a certain amount of overs, um, he can almost uh, incorporate his own intensity at what he wants to operate at. And um, that's what we kind of need going forward, is players being able to adapt to certain situations and circumstances that we have in front of us. Um, but again, we might be faced with a different kind of... Uh, different kind of game now uh, starting tomorrow where bowlers might have a lot more responsibility from the seam seamers department. Alfred and then Colin. Um, Dean, there's an interesting uh, mark above your right eye there. What, what happened there? Surprised uh, this question's only coming out now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a bit of an accident in my room uh, on our last night in Durban. I slept in the shower and hit my head. Um, yeah, getting out of the shower, which is obviously not ideal. Um, yeah, so I've got got a few stitches uh, to uh, yeah in my forehead, and uh, yeah, obviously not uh, my proudest moment. But I mean, you know, these kind of accidents happen, and it's obviously never intentional. But um, yeah, so be it. I, I seem to be okay. Uh, I better today, and it was obviously going to be a concern, especially with my with where my helmet rests. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm too far until uh, the doctor actually takes the stitches out. So, um, but I'm okay, I'll, I'll survive. Also it helps that he's got such a thick skull. <laughs> um, Colin is up next. Is that a quote? Yeah. I no, mean, please. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I don't know why she's saying anything. <laughs> Dean, uh, the, the Bangladeshis complained about uh, excessive sledging. They also complained about the umpiring. What, what was your opinion of the, the atmosphere or the, or the way the game was played in Durban? And do you believe that those complaints are justified? I don't think they're justified whatsoever, especially towards um, uh, the South African side. Um, look, we play the game hard and um, if anything, it was, we were just giving back what we were getting when we were batting. And um, this is test cricket. It's a man's environment when it comes to playing this at this level. And I intend still to play the game hard. Um, by no means that we swear or use foul language towards the Bangladeshi cricketers because we still respect them in that nature. Um, but we were just giving them back what we were receiving when we were playing. Um, I just think they need to harden up and play the game at a, at, at a level that um, maybe they're not used to. Um, but yeah, this, this is purely just us um, not retaliating. It's just us playing a nature of, 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 a, of, of cricket that we, we received at first and uh, we just uh, responded in, in that way. But again, we never used bad language. We never used foul language. One of our messages to the players were that we do everything with dignity and we don't throw our badge away. We don't throw our name away whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, it's, I, I don't see it. I honestly didn't see any bad sledging out there, even from their side. I didn't see anything. So, um, yeah, I just think um, this is test cricket and we need to dry our eyes sometimes. And the umpiring? Yeah, look, umpiring was tough. I don't think the uh, the wicket helped, uh, especially with the invariable bounce, which can maybe uh, challenge umpires umpires deci decision. And and I'm sure their discretions can be uh, interpreted differently. Um, yeah, I feel I feel for them because they're actually good umpires. And Marie's been umpire of the year now. And um, yeah, and, and Adrian's obviously starting off in the Test arena, and he's definitely not a not a bad umpire whatsoever. Um, human nature again. I think the the human factor needs to be needs to be uh, spoken of. Yeah, they after all they are human beings. Um, they do make errors as do as do the players. 
Um, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna they're gonna learn a hell of a lot of, out of that. Um, so yeah, going forward, it's um, it's out of our hands. The decision's final, and um, whatever the umpire decides on, um, we need to respect that. Um, technology is there for a reason. If you don't use the technology, then you then you kind of holding yourself accountable for their decisions as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the second test we we could have a, a better show. Thank you. For us, and then we'll finish with Ken. And just on that, I think the only thing we saw in Durban was um, the one Bangladesh bowler about it, Hussein had a few words with you. And then their specific complaint was around their young centurion, uh, the, the Joy. Were yeah. those, you know, were those kind of the issues that you picked up on as well? And when you say that you were just giving something back, was it after that happened, uh, that incident with the bowler and yourself? Well, I think a lot of things you don't see. Um, that's all that happens off camera. So I think you got to you got to bear in mind to maybe incidences that are happening off camera as well. Um, we wouldn't we wouldn't go out there and intentionally try and um, intimidate a, a, a young player. We'll play the game at a hard level, but we're not there to use language in trying to intimidate guys. We'd rather try and intimidate by a skill that we can provide. Um, but also, this is test cricket. When I started test cricket, um, the environments were a lot harsher than what it is now. Um, you were told everything that you didn't want to know about yourself at those times. And um, yeah, I just think we're playing, we're still playing a tough format. We're still playing for our country. First and foremost, we're representing our country and, and we want to win. Um, and if you're playing a little bit of mind games on, on the opposition, why not? And Ken. Uh, just following up on, on both those last two questions, D did you get the feeling, Dean, uh, during the Bangladesh second innings that they had metaphorically taken their eyes eyes off the ball? Did they seem a bit distracted, uh, lost focus a bit? Uh, maybe, but I think it was at the level of intensity that we were playing the game. Um, I felt our intensity was right up there uh, with regards to the conditions that we were we were facing. Even though we were bowling spin bowlers, um, the ruthlessness and relent relentlessness that the, that the spinners showed was, was world class. Um, so maybe, maybe they got caught up in the moment, which played perfectly in our hands as well. And I think that's what comes with gamesmanship. You got to try and you got to out, outsmart and outplay and outwit your uh, opposition. Um, I think that's the total emotional and mental side of test cricket that people forget about sometimes. Um, and then if you incorporate your skill and, you, and you're doing all those kind of um, ticking those boxes and doing those to your best uh, of your ability, then that, that's pretty much uh, what sums up test cricket in my opinion. And on that note, thank you very much everyone for joining us. Um, we'll speak to you tomorrow at the post play press conference of day one. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.